Hello, comic book readers, and welcome to another live episode of Off the Rack. I'm Sal. And I'm Tiffany. This is a comic book review show where we take comic books and we talk about them, review them, and then we recommend comics that are coming out this week we think you should check out. We also have a book of the week yeah. at the end of every episode where we decide which book that we read, if any qualify, and always there's some qualifier uh, to be book of the week. Heck yeah. An exceptional book that Heck you'll yeah. need to check out. Uh, we should also so, uh, mention this show is sponsored by you if you're watching the show live, of course, on Monday nights, usually between 5.30 and 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come on by. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to our channel, click the bell for notifications, check your notification settings, and make sure that you get all those notifications so you know when you're going live. So essentially your phone uh, can get a little, uh, little guy like mine does where uh, it just popped up here. Boom. There it is. There's our episode. Yay! So I know. I got mine, too. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, this doesn't actually happen too often. Like, I don't see, I don't get any other push notifications besides this channel. So, you know, there's ways around it. Uh, anyway, if you want to sponsor today's show, you can use Super Chats. Ask a question or comment, read it here on the show, and it'll be here part of the show forever. So you're essentially the third member of this cast. Uh, we also talk about the news, and there's plenty of it to cover today. Um, in particular, I guess we'll talk about the big X-Men rollout, uh, yeah. the massive announcement from Marvel that coincidentally came out around the exact same time that Marvel released preview video of the X-Men 97 cartoon series. So X-Men was trending, and I saw some folks on Twitter were kind of like, hey, X-Men's trending, we did it! And I'm like, well, you didn't do it. Like, Marvel Studios did it to get the ball rolling and then you piggybacked on it which is great and it's exactly what i want marvel to do comics to do mm -hmm. is literally just i've said this before i'll say it again comics are a small aspect of the multimedia landscape and they are not getting bigger mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the best way for them to grow or expand is to find those avenues where they can reach a wider audience, especially if it's organic. Yeah. And if X-Men 97 is trending on, uh, on all social media as well, hell, how about making a massive X-Men comic book related announcement on the same day at the same time? Because outside of, let's say, a little video that they put together or a sequence that they release that's ahead of the release of the cartoon... People are just going to be talking about how much they liked it or how much they didn't like it. They're going to be responding. And then that's going to be it. But if you hit them with more information, like let's say yeah. the entire creative teams. Yes. And teases of more X-Men rollouts. Well, then you got a conversation going. You got multiple conversations going. A lot of things happening. And so we've got at least three X-Men titles coming out under the moniker X-Men. And then we'll talk about those other titles that don't have creative teams associated with them just yet. Sure, sure, sure. Let's this is, of it. course, this is funny because we just talked about a leaked article. We or did like an article that was supposedly had all the answers. Yes, it did. Some of them were close. some of them were close, and some of them were not so close. But uh, yeah, as is the case when you're coming up with leaks or you're responding to those kinds of things. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, so in the wake of uh, Krakoa's end, we're getting the uh, Uncanny X Men, the classic old school X Men series. Gail Simone, David Marquez. Uh, again, this is a fine lineup this is what i might green light were i an editor of this lineup in 2006 <laughs> but uh that's that that said a lot of people are very excited about it and i sure. will admit that i am uh, personally enthused by the roster that is teased by this ryan stegman teaser uh you know you got wolverine rogue gambit jubilee and nightcrawler yeah that mm -hmm. sounds like a fun team yeah yeah i i'm i'm all on board for that uh, then we have just plain x-men uh, but it's anything other than playing uh, with Jed McKay and Ryan Stegman. That's probably going to be the big, like the the the, the market heading title. Mm -hmm. This is going to be the one that everyone's going to be excited to right. read or, or or look for. Man, is I, there anything Jed McKay isn't writing at this point? At this, not at Marvel, certainly. Which means, again, this is this is another one where I'm like, what's he going to let go? Right. Well, probably gonna be Doc. I don't know if uh, if if Jed McKay is anything like. <clears throat> his predecessors like bendis and people like that he could keep it going okay i mean how many books well, is you, he right you better be prepared for dr strange moon knight and the avengers to show up in your x-men book 100 percent, <laughs> or at the very least for x-men to start invading those titles as well 100 percent. uh but that's great because magic is on the team that jed mckay's writing so that means that magic is probably going to become 
uh, the new uh, apprentice of Doctor Strange. Makes a lot of sense to me because that's been teased. Who wrote that? What if comic where magic was the Sorcerer Supreme? I don't remember. It was not Jed McKay. It was not. It was not. But uh, but that, 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 that's something going on. No. Anyway, the team uh, involves a number of characters, and of course, the big kind of like surprise is the 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 who's in the chair mystery box. You know, we got this character in a floating chair, evocative of Professor X. Got a got a suit, but it's Magneto colored, right. wearing a Magneto helmet, but we're obscuring his identity. We've in fact seen their uh, identity. Their identity could be a woman. We don't know. Uh, I my my uh, theory on this one, based on absolutely nothing, is that it's onslaught because this, these are books from the nineties. Yep. yep. Um, so yeah, that's that's my theory. But uh, I was like, I was going to go off of where things might be going now, and I'm like, why would I bother to do that? Right. Yeah. Like based on what the creative forces of you know Jerry Duggan yeah, or no, it's, uh, it's, it's, Al Ewing. They they know they're just finishing it up. Yeah. Right they they have, they're not setting anything up. They're leaving. Yeah. And I hope that whatever they make is an I hope they make some awesome independent series because you know that that's where they're probably going to go. Uh, unless DC is uh, smart and goes, hey, I just noticed that Cy Spurrier, Kieran Gillen, Jerry Duggan, uh, right. hell, even, um, you know, the dude is writing uh, Wolverine. Maybe it's Legion. Maybe Legion's in the chair. Legion's in the chair. They're just going to take Spurrier's Spurrier's plans. pitch. Yeah. yeah. That'd be great. That'd be so cool, actually. They're just like, oh, whatever. They're like, yeah, okay. All right. I see what Spurrier was talking about. <laughs> There's no way. There's I no know. way. I know, I know. Uh, but uh, the other exciting thing is that uh, what what it looks like to me is that uh, Real Beast is here to stay. Yeah. Right? So. It'll, it will be interesting to see what, like, hard carries over and what's retcon. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's frustrating because it all just happened. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like we're going to see heavy retcons of things that were going on or whatever. Well, I don't think it's necessarily going to, well, we'll have to treat them like retcons, but certainly um, things will be ignored or thrown away or cast aside oh, because, for sure. you know, that's how, that's the Marvel way. Mm -hmm. um, and then we got this other team, uh, the exceptional X-Men with mm -hmm. Kitty and Emma and, and company. Um, Eve Ewing, uh, Carmen Carnero. Mm -hmm. Yawn. Uh, but then, uh, as opposed to, you know, in addition to this 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 glorious teaser, which, you know, big props to Ryan Stegman, great idea, uh, these other titles, right. you know, not just those three. We also have X-Factor, Storm, X-Force, Wolverine, Phoenix, and NYX. I can't believe NYX. I know. I can't believe it. I, th that's nostalgia is hard. Uh, I, I am, I am like, I can't believe it. The other thing that I want everyone to understand is that if in the teaser that they released, um, all the logos are from the nineties. Oh, for sure. None of these, none of the Krakoan iconography is being carried over. Nothing that was worked Which... on, you know, and, and, and firmly established as this really like solid, internal branding and design yeah which is which is a shame it is um, a shame but i also appreciate it because it's like it's over yeah hard cut right We're done um that's fine yeah you know it's, yeah it's, it's it's fine right so uh x factor x force you know these are team books sure how far in the 90s are they going to be will rob liefeld be drawing or writing any of these are they going to get fabian nicieza Time will tell. Uh, Storm has an established logo and title uh, on her book mm -hmm. that she has had yep. during the career. Gone, thrown away, and replaced with a, a short 90s version of the Storm logo. Mm -hmm. uh, Phoenix, again, I, I could see this one easily being Louise Simonson's book to lose. Sure. Uh, and NYX, which never had a 90s logo because I don't think it was invented was in the early 90s. 2000s. It might have been like either 2000 or 2001. That was Casada, right? Yeah, that was all Casada. That was the uh, invention of uh, of uh, of Laura was in NYX. Mm. And, uh, and of course, uh, the Wolverine book, which has been teased and there's no creative team associated with it just yet, though I, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised based on the similar, you know, re repeated names we saw from the leaks versus this that uh, I'm sure... Capullo is drawing some Wolverine, if not the main story, maybe its own book or uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and then we got, uh, you know, uh, that's that's the books. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. Whatever. And I, I, you know, I'm 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 very. I was actually not. I was I was I was really surprised yeah. to see how enthusiastically they were embraced. 
Like I didn't see any negativity around it. I mean, I like legitimately I've even the Krakoan apologists fans. Yeah. Weren't like this sucks. They were just like, Oh, cool. Well, good for you guys. I'm off. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, and here's the thing. We all, everyone wants to pit things against. Everything yes. Else. Everything's a fight. I will say seemingly based on just general reception of things. Mm -hmm. The people who didn't like Krakoa, didn't like it very loudly. Uh, yes, they were a vocal contingent of the audience. And people who enjoyed Krakoa often were just like, I like it. And I'm, and you know, I know that this won't last forever. Yeah. And I'm just going to enjoy it while I can. Right. So it doesn't surprise me at all that the people who like Krakoa would like, you know, be like, you know what? My time is done. And, yeah. I'm, and I'm thrilled for those who are looking forward to the next one. I'm, yep. I'm thrilled for you all. Yep. And those I, who... that does not surprise me in the least. Yeah. Um, right. And those who are really excited for this also have to throw in a, uh, a bash against Krakoa as well. That's, it's like, and that's the I'm thing. so glad this is here. I'm so happy Krakoa is over. It's so much better. I read one issue of Hawks and Pox and I had to get off the train. And that's, and that's really where I, I struggle because it's, it's unnecessary, you know, like uh, you can get as excited as you want for logos and teams, but you're not going to know if you're going to like the books until they actually come out and you start reading them. And it, it doesn't just because this the last series of these last few years of X books weren't something that you were interested in. Doesn't mean that they weren't, you know, competently produced. Right. You know, there are plenty of books out there that like I can acknowledge are well created and there's just, they just don't resonate with me. Yeah. It's just not for me. And then there's going to be some, there's going to be a small percentage of people who are just like, I'm on, the train forever. Like, right. I love, I read X-Men. I love X-Men. I loved all of it. Mm -hmm. I'm here for all of it. Let's go. Totally. And that's great. Yeah. That's great. You know, it, it's, it's, I don't think even post, you know, Hickman leaving and, mm -hmm. and them trying to like extend it out that anyone who was reading Krakoa mm -hmm. thought this was going to be sustainable. I, like that just, we all knew it. And we were yeah. all there for that. We were just there for the storytelling as it was happening. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, And so like, I, I will, I'm going to see, if I keep going with this or not, I very much resonated with the story that Krakoa gave us, the opportunities for characters to interact, to be on teams that were not present before. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I legitimately am happy if people are excited for the next thing. Yeah. No, That's absolutely. Great. That's great. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. But just really no reason to bash something. No. That being said. Yeah. Uh, the 90s aesthetic is uh, clearly deliberate and... Oh no, they're selling. They want they're you to you. be sure, for sure, that this is this is going to be a return to form. And yeah, this isn't Krakoa. Like you'll be able to look on a shelf and recognize the books from the Krakoa. Yes, if you read comics forty years ago, you will recognize these logos. Uh, that being said, it reminds me of the um, there's like a poster that I pulled from X Men number one actually uh, from 1991, where uh, it's this gorgeous like full you know poster of every character drawn yeah. by jim lee and there's a big starburst on it and just says and the best is yet to come and arguably that never happened but it was just funny to see like this is the apex like that was the that was the highest point x-men would yeah, be yeah, yeah. financially speaking and they were like and but but trust me like it'll only get better from here and you know when the onslaught showed up and it was like oh no right 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 no it won't um at least it will never sell like it is right now right, and right, it right. will never reach the iconic level that x-men from the 90s the jim lee x-men had on the culture uh but i i wonder and i talked about this on another show but i, I want to talk about it with you because you okay. and I share these opinions uh is that like x-men from the 90s jim lee's x-men is the aesthetic it, and, it, and it certainly is there is a clear and like definite decision on the part of Marvel. And that is a capital M umbrella over studios and comics and merchandising to connect everything to the 90s uh, X-Men aesthetic. Like, mm -hmm. and I and I think it all genuinely stems from x-men the animated series from the 90s coming out on disney plus because the decision to green light to produce and then and then execute mm -hmm. the rollout they had for x-men 97 is something i've never seen marvel do like before like i've never seen marvel get so into this plan like well, x-men 97 yeah. the, the fact that there's money being spent 
on an animated show that yes. and that care and effort is being put into it. That's a new one too. I cite the cancellation and replacements of the Avengers and Spider-Man cartoon shows from like 10, 15 years ago. You know, those shows that replaced them were demonstrably lower quality, lower effort. They were worse shows. Mm -hmm. They were very much like a kind of cruise control kind of series. And yet when they saw how people received X-Men, the animated series on Disney plus they went, whole hog on getting that going so that's your that's like your theory i this. my theory yeah. is that the that like the like the only thing anyone watched on disney plus when it launched during COVID was that cartoon show like it's the only thing that it can explain to me why after that rollout they were like um new show right and the original voice actors and any x-men merchandise that comes out is going to be that one and it's going to say x-men 97 on it and it's going to be it's just from the arcade one-up cabinets that are being reprinted with x-men 97 aesthetics on them to there aren't any X-Men toys on the shelves that don't say X-Men 97 on them to the X-Men 97 t-shirts and clothing and backpacks to the fact that they redesigned Beast in the Marvels to look like Beast from X-Men 97. Like it's Kelsey Grammer Beast, but that was a suit and it didn't look anything like Beast from the cartoon show. But the one on the screen in the Marvels does looks exactly like it from the underbite to everything. Like there is a, there's just this like streamlinification of X-Men mm -hmm. and I don't, I, and the only thing that isn't is Deadpool. <laughs> like, and even then Deadpool got a costume upgrade to the point where he is brighter colored, but that could also be like his integration into Marvel. And they're going like, now it's more accurate Yeah, if it's yeah, like right, brighter. Right, right, right. But I mean, Wolverine's outfit and Deadpool and Wolverine's the X-Men 97 outfit. Right. Like everything is X-Men 97 and all the comic books, all the logos are going to be from the exact same period as when X-Men, when X-Men, the cartoon show was coming out. Right. That says to me, like, like there's just, I've never seen anyone. I've never seen Marvel on the same page like this in my life. And you think it's because of, I think I, I, I have to assume it is because what else would there be? Well, it could be a couple of things. Well, please tell me what they are. <laughs> It could be um, like sheer market research. They could have literally hired a consulting firm to yes. go out there and do research on it and and recognize um, that their fan base is mostly in people who remember right. that. Who remember that show. Like the largest contingent of non-comic reading fans yep. have a fondness for that show. Additionally, you could say that considering recently a lot of the MCU hasn't been well received, it could have been a marked switch to distract you from that with this instead because this makes you think of nostalgia and happy things and it could be just a push across the board yeah and the comics are like we're gonna catch that wave right it could not it could be they're not even necessarily in the same room as those decision makers they're just aping off of it and going like well it looks like they're all going full 90s mm -hmm. let's follow suit i mean i would love it if it legitimately if, if it was that they were brought into the conversation it, but technically like, it, could be a, it, could, it could be a perfect storm of a couple of things where it was like good ratings not maybe not the greatest ever but like good ratings right, right? and solid you know maybe it was one of those things where things that they had spent a lot of money on weren't performing as well and this thing that they already owned was performing quite well yeah um, and that was enough. But then like when you think about the fact that they look at that and they go, oh, you know what? That could also be a great distraction. Yes. Well, but it, the, the only reason why I would argue with that at all is because the X-Men 97 rollout was happening while they were still all in on going off book when it came to their Marvel productions. Like when it came to making their Moon Knights and their Ms. Marvels and their The Marvels and their Eternals right. and all that stuff. It was only until literally like last week that uh, so when one did, of the head of Disney said, dates. when did it start? When did it, when, when did, did X-Men 97 get yeah. launched? I mean, they, I think they green later X-Men 97, like when Disney plus launched, like shortly thereafter, like during COVID, I want to say 2019. I think that that would very much line up with their concerns because twenty like twenty the COVID was rough for them. Yes, yes, it was bad. For, it was bad for everybody. But uh, yeah, you know, it, it it could still be one of those that they were looking at the amount of money put into mm -hmm. other properties that were on Disney Plus and thinking, well, people are home, they're going to watch it. Right. It was announced in twenty twenty one. Yeah. So that would have been post COVID. Yes, for sure. Right. 
but during they used COVID, I think, to like come up with their game plan. Okay. You know? Um yeah. I'm just I'm just like it's just, it's thinking just, outside the box a little bit. Totally. That, like that it might be very much a desire to go all in on nostalgia. Mm-hmm. I think most marketers know at this point that nostalgia is a great driver. Of of money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, Absolutely. And admittedly, you know, the Jim Lee of it out of the way, I would hazard a guess to say that uh the X Men that are in the animated series mm-hmm. are probably the most identifiable to people who aren't comic book readers. One hundred percent. Oh yeah, no. Co- non comic readers are fans of Gambit, Rogue, Wolverine, Storm. Mm-hmm. You know, and then whoever's left. Right. <laughs> and then you know you get your outliers, but uh, yeah, it's funny. Um, what was it? Thorn Identity mentions that uh, it takes a minimum of a year to create an animated TV series, usually about eighteen months from script to screen. That's not counting the development phase. That's what I'm saying. Is like, yeah, that good point. Like that while they were like when they got the numbers yeah, or when they got their plan 97 didn't come out in 2021 it was announced no, in 2021 that's right so which means they've been working on it or since at least 2021 they were, well they announced it in 2021 that means that they've been working towards it at least during 2020 2020 was definitely a year i really love that you it. think that they had that much of a plan no no, no there's no they plan probably had a, a meeting decided that was what they were going to do and then they're like we'll announce it yeah this isn't this isn't like creating the space program, no. program activity. You and can't make an announcement and then create your program. This is TV. Sure they can. <laughs> and here's why because like you put that announcement out there like that's coming. That might just by on its own without having any product there ready to go because people don't know when things are happening. They're like they may, they may not look for these things. Yeah. That's enough for them to buy a subscription and forget it's there. Mm-hmm. And just keep paying. It. Oh, that's very true. Well, that's certainly what they're what they're counting. <laughs> like, it makes sense for them to announce something that even if they don't have it ready. Yeah. The thing that cr- that drove me crazy was like this, this all in on X-Men and this like continuation of that series when, you know, Spider-Man also was part of the rollout mm-hmm. and the Spider-Man 94 show, I think was probably, I would argue that was more popular than X-Men. Sure. And, but Spider-Man but it's not theirs. It's in a weird place. So I think that was exactly what happened. They went, Oh, wh- like what are the top watch shows on Disney plus? Like from the, from the Marvel bolt. And they were like, Oh, Spider-Man. And they're like, what's the next highest? And they were like, Oh, X-Men obviously. And they're like, okay, great. Well, we can go all in on X-Men. I don't have to make a deal. I don't have to call that lunatic over at Sony mm-hmm. and talk to her about that. I could just make X-Men and we could go all in on that. Yes. Let's do that. Mm-hmm. And then while we're doing that, maybe Sony will collapse. Like I can't imagine Sony making, three horrible unasked for movies that bombed in a row that might help bankrupt the studio in that time. Two out of three Craven's coming anyway. Uh, yeah. So anyway, this is a comic book show. We were talking a little bit about, um, about X-Men, but, but before we roll into X-Men, uh, I mentioned they saved the day. They do, yeah. Uh, I read uh, Thundercats number two from Declan Shalvey and Drew Moss. Uh, if you like Thundercats from the 80s, or if you are familiar with this concept, but you were like, ah, I'm not watching that show, or you like watched the show. Sort of nostalgia. Yes. Uh, or if you watched the show and you went, oh no, this is horrible. Uh, this is like a better version of that, like where it's not horrible and the characters make sense and they're not as hokey. And you know that they can get away with doing more, but it's also not in any way like gratuitous or inappropriate it's not like dynamite's thundercat's gonna be the hardcore the boys-esque interpretation you're all waiting for if you want that the closest thing you can come to is wild storms in a a thundercat series that is not good Mm, but mm. and and it pushes the envelope but not but you know tastelessly but not even as far as you might assume that like they could Uh, but this is a fun show or a fun book about the show that reinterprets it through the lens that is very faithful to the iconography and, and the characters introduces a new character uh, who uh, may or may not be a pawn in Mumra's schemes. Mm. Uh, if you like Thundercats or you're predisposed to digging Thundercats, you're going to enjoy this. If you're never going to read Thundercats, this is not going to convince you to read more Thundercats. Right. 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 Uh, you read Ghost Rider final vengeance. Number one. I'd love to hear what you oh, thought wow, about you're, that you're, one. You're just, you're just deciding what I'm talking about next. <laughs> I did, and I actually have a physical you copy. You have a physical copy. That's why I was like, oh, well, you don't have to pull it up. But I do. I do have to pull it up. Uh, this is written by uh, Ben Percy with art by Danny Kim. And, uh, you know, this was solicited with a promise of a new Ghost Rider, a new spirit of vengeance, which I initially was like, maybe they mean a new, like, Zarathos. No. <laughs> which I knew it wasn't. Like, I knew it wouldn't be that, but I was like, maybe it's that. 
Yeah. No, it's just no. like who who's gonna be a ghost rider for a minute? Ah. Uh, and I, I or for longer. Who knows? You know what I who's mean? Who's gonna be another ghost rider? Right? Not I'm the like, new I'm ghost like, rider. Is Percy like planning on leaving Marvel and just wants to do a whole bunch of fun things? Because like that's what it feels like. You know, like he's like, I gotta do my saber tooth war. Clearly, I'm not gonna be doing Wolverine anymore. Gotta get off that book. And I'm gonna make a new ghost rider. I'm gonna put my thumbprint on that one. Here we go. <laughs> and that's what this is. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that's what you're getting. Like if you're like, oh man, I love Johnny Blaze as Ghost Rider. Or you're like, oh boy, maybe Danny Ketch will show back up and get Ghost Rider again. Or Robbie. Or Robbie could show up. No, it's a new Ghost Rider. Oh. It's a new Ghost Rider. And that's what this whole issue is about. This whole issue just is setting up literally the new... is just the spirit of vengeance. Like is Zarathos being like, oh, Mephisto's telling me it's time to move on. And he just leaves Johnny in, what? A, in a tunnel with a big scary like Shelob spider. Like they were in the middle of a Ghost Rider adventure, and then yeah, he's and like, like he can guess feel what? That, he can feel that Johnny's kind of done with him anyway. Oh, I, I, I mean, maybe they killed the spider. No, nope, they didn't kill the spider. Johnny's in trouble. So he's is have a rough time. but will Johnny grow long hair, put on sunglasses, and become Man, Blaze? I hope he becomes Blaze because I think that's actually better. Honestly, yeah, I've be... never liked Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider. That's fair. And I loved Blaze. Well, that's fair. Can you guess? Do you know who it is? Who this ghost writer? No, 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 ghost writer? I don't even know who's in this anymore. Is no, it Danny Ketch's sister? Chat, don't put it in there. Don't put it in yet. <laughs> don't put it in. Sal, guess who you think the new ghost writer is? Danny Ketch's sister, because she was supposed to be the writer. It is not. All right, chat. He he moved to another thing, so we can't see it. Feel free to start putting your guesses in there while I continue. If you know it, don't put it in. Come on. <laughs> Let the people who haven't read it give a, give a shot to who they think the new ghost writer is. Literally, the spirit of vengeance just abandons Johnny. Abandons Blaze. Johnny, travels around, and just goes like all over the place. He just goes like, all over the place. He jumps into other people's like a bodies. symbiote. <laughs> yeah, he's just try he's trying him out. He's like, is it this? Is it this? Is it this? Nope. Mm -hmm. I feel all kinds of things. Whenever he settles on, um, a like <laughs> he's like a stripper for a hot second. Okay, he's a shark. I'm sure that's like so. Animals, great gonna... and small, are also qualifiers. I assume it's just. Does that shark I... have a Judeo-Christian mythology belief system? Obviously, do you not know shark culture? Jeez. Um, no, I, I don't know. But like, this guy gets like, the Ghost Rider for a second, and then like he's riding a camel, and the camel kind of becomes his ride. His, yeah. But also not because just his head. So then I was like, wait, is he also becoming a Ghost Rider? Maybe he bounced from the guy to the camel. I'm guessing. So like, clearly, I don't get the. But then, like the plane becomes the the thing, which is so the kind pilot of fun. must have become. Like, that's yeah, kind of fun. That is cool. Um, but uh, he ends up like running into this this woman who's like a, a single mom, oh, God. with two kids. Mm -hmm. Grandma's trying to take the kids away. Clearly, um, like like the father's fa mom, dad died of a drug overdose. Which like the the grandma is just like, yeah, he was just he just he did that in order to get away from you because that's horrible. And like this woman's just a wretch. Just, yes, she just wants. She's like, I'm gonna take your children away from you. I'm gonna have my very expensive lawyers do that. She mm -hmm. like plants drugs in the apartment in the house. This woman's running on like no sleep. Yep. She's been working doubles just to like keep the kids going. And and Zarathos comes to her. Right. And uh, and yeah, like. Grandma comes in with like you know the the lawyers like no with um child protective services okay and uh, you know she's like oh the drugs are over there the child protective service lady is like oh, they don't pay me enough for this goodbye and she just <laughs> leaves she just bails right uh -huh. and uh, you know grandma's like hey come on kids come to me like I gotta get you out of here the, your mom has a crazy skull like firehead we, we gotta go right kids go to the door daughter locks the door and is just like no nah, it's cool i'm gonna stay with mom because mm -hmm. she wouldn't let anything happen to me oh. and like they they kill grandma right and then zarathos is like no nah, that wasn't it oh that wasn't it i gotta go goodbye okay that's weird and then we touch base with what's been going on in, with thor why not sure right and then um danger from x-men the, 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 okay becomes ghost rider for a minute what? because everything that, that's happening with orcus yeah uh, you know, mad about that. We get like sort of like a um, DC uh, DC sort of like virus kind of for a moment. Hot second. Then it's gone. It's, don't worry about it. It's it's all good. It's just all the ideas shotgunned into one book. Yeah. Then then he goes like a few hundred thousand miles from Earth where there's like a brood attack. Now, I assume we were dealing with the Orca stuff. Now, this is different. These are brood different brood. Who are clearly not under the control of brew, I guess. Yeah. Um, so these brood are attacking a ship or maybe it is the Orca ship. Anyway, um, 
That's weird because Percy's part of the brain trust. He should know what but the brood are up to. Because well, then he can't tell. And like it could be that it doesn't, it doesn't matter. The point it doesn't that, matter. That, the it doesn't point is matter. for a brood the, ghost rider. The brood become like one of the ghost rider or one of the brood becomes a ghost rider, which is funny because we kind of don't saw they that. all become ghost riders no, then? Because they're a saw that. Remember? Yes. Um. Well, we saw that. Yeah. In, in that book, in yeah. Brood trouble in the Big Easy. That's right, where we saw ghost rider. Well, actually, that was a ghost rider becoming a brood. <laughs> Right, right, right. But in this, it's a brood becoming a ghost rider mm. for a second. So I guess that's a reference to that. Maybe. Um, but in this, that brood, uh, I guess, falls in love with this chick and he's trying to save her or yeah. it's trying to save her uh, before it's like, you know, taken down or, or what have you. Um, you know, ghost rider goes other places. Uh, Craven <sighs> becomes a ghost rider. Oh, that's fun. That'd be a, a good second. book. Good, right? That'd be a fun book. Right? All these, this book. is like a million pitches. All in yeah, one a issue. million pitches in one, but that's not where we settle. Oh, good. Okay. We settle on. Let's find out if Chat got this, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> I don't know if anybody even guessed. Why would anyone? Fool killer, Jason. <laughs> Colson, that's a good These one. These are all great ones. Peter Parker, Bishop Gentleman Schist Goes, B Bishop Madam Sister. Webb, I love that. Yep, Cloak or Dagger. Jeff the Landshark, Jeff. Aunt Jean. May, I love Aunt May. Yep. Gene, Brew. Molecule Man, Alan Moore. <laughs> ben Riley, I love that. Ben Riley would be perfect. It's the hood. It was the hood. It's the hood. Oh. So the hood is now Ghost Rider. Okay. And I mean, he looks like Spawn. So, or or, I mean, or Doctor Doom 2099 yeah, or whatever. Also, also that. So. All right, cool. What a what a fun series. We'll see how so that goes. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing with this one, everybody. I don't I don't know. Didn't he want to do something with the hood before? Yep, I so think so. he already had a hood pitch, and yeah. so he's just... <laughs> I don't know. It was, you know... How do these, like... There were so many, like you're, like, you're all over the place with this book, and then it's just like, bam, and I'm like, I kind of... Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool so there there you go yeah well i read symbiote spider-man 2099 <laughs> number one i'm really glad we all went on that journey together yeah though, aren't you oh Come yeah on, definitely. didn't you have fun with all of these things i mean that could have been yeah that that, that that these are all great pitches well some of them are yeah uh peter david roger antonio um this is uh yeah this is the one that you were like you weren't going to read this, then we pulled it up last minute. Well, it's not drawn by Greg Land, yeah. and it is written by Peter David. And so it's like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. And it's just a retcon fest. Yeah. Slash return to, like, the world. Because <laughs> there already is, like, a Venom 2099. I'm sorry. I'm just loving the, the, the miserable, confusing journey. Yeah, it, was it certainly was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm very lucky that I got to go on that. Like all the people in the Marvel Universe who got picked up by the spirit of vengeance but uh you know there's already a venom so we get to see that and you know it's just peter david like returning to the world and it's a very easy to jump in if you read spider-man 2099 from peter david then this is an easy book to pick up okay. uh, if you didn't it's not because it's going to reference a lot of things that happen like there's literally a citation in the issue where they go this happened in, in spider-man 2099 number like 45 so you're just going to go back to some to some back issues bins and find it. Well, or use your Marvel. Yeah, that did not. Account. That, that is not what he said. He said go into back issues bins and find it. Wow, really? Uh, that would, and I can imagine the editor being like, put that like put in the Marvel Unlimited app. Uh, except we don't know what's in it from day to day, and uh, I know that Marvel editors are too busy miscommunication uh, miscommunicating how to use the proper conjunction of its on Twitter, but regardless this is a you know it's a fun story where we just watch like the whole thing kind of like come together because you know the symbiote situation in 2009 is very different mm -hmm. from uh what you know it to be and it's not like the same story as symbiote mm -hmm. spider-man which has starred peter parker for the largest uh amount of time but uh but we do see that uh peter david has something to say about punisher 2099 there is a special and incredible cameo in here that if you care about what's happening in 2099 and you love punisher 2099 uh this is a crucial and very important issue <laughs> i was blown away by what they did and how it happened and you think oh man yeah i get it he became a sim he became venom no that is not what happened but uh if you were wondering if miguel gets a symbiote uh the answer is yes but it isn't until the last page uh okay. it's definitely worth checking out was it good did you enjoy it it was fine as someone who was aware of yeah of it, what was it, going it, on it's fine okay you know i i quit 
Spider-Man 2099 when I when it came out after like issue 12. Okay. It just got like too far up its own butt. But at the same time, <laughs> uh you know, that that is the world you were signing up for. Like that is right. if you love Spider-Man 2099, you love it before all that stuff. Sure, it's just sure, like, sure, yeah, sure. that's fine. That's okay. not what I want. But okay. uh look, this is the world. And Antonio's art is good. It doesn't. Uh, it's not a worthy success for successor. You know, it's a, to something like, uh, you know, I almost got his name, but uh, the artist on oh, oh on, okay. on two thousand ninety nine. But come uh, to you. yeah, it'll definitely come to you. It'll be like books from or like when we're doing a few more reviews. Mm-hmm. Someone will just say it in the chat. Yeah, that'll but help. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it, it's it's fine. I wish it were a little. Uh, you know. I appreciate they didn't just get the guy they get when they do. Thank you, Rick Leonardi. Um, it ain't it ain't Rick Leonardi. Um, it, it's it feels like a like a fill in. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it feels less important, but better than Greg Land. They drew it. You can you can say a lot of things about the art, you, but one thing you can't say is that they traced it. Right, 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 right. So that's a high mark for what you'd come to expect from the symbiote Spider Man brand. <sighs> That's where we are. So anyway, uh, what else did you read? I know you read Ultimate Black Panther. You want to talk about that? I was going to do a quick independent comic since I know we have oh, two to talk should. about. So I want to talk about Dark Space's Dungeon number four. <gasps> Yay! Um, from Scott Snyder and Hayden Sherman. This is an IDW series, part of their Dark Spaces initiative. Mm-hmm. Um, Dungeon was is only five issues. And I got to tell you, I think I love Scott Snyder on five issues. Right. I He's... mean, I like him on like horror in general. Yes. But like Scott on a five issue mini yeah it doesn't feel rushed it but it also it, feels like it's got all the right pacing the, yeah and that's what it is this pay this book needs to feel like you're under the gun yes like it's meant to feel like that like you're have a limited amount of time and it does mm-hmm. and i gotta tell you this issue ending where it did i literally was like, <gasps> like I, it was, I was like i wish i wish i had waited to read this until five had come out yeah that's how it left me like it was just really well paced um Mm-hmm. I can't I can't say anything without giving it away. Like you have to read this yeah. series. If you want to read this series, you have to read it without having someone tell you what's going to happen. Exactly. Um, and I don't even know. I don't even know where, where this is going next. I have some theories. But this is the and I don't even want to say them out loud. This is the penultimate issue, though. Yes, so. this is the penultimate issue. And it was honestly like they've all been strong. This was one of the strongest ones, I'm telling mm-hmm. you. That, that like last just where they leave it. Yes. I, I was I oh, yeah. It was excellent. It was excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can find it. So you can you can see this. Yeah. Like this is it. Oh yeah. 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 This is where we this is where we leave. I'm like oh. I'm going in. Yeah. It's there is <laughs> yeah, there's a sequence where we find out the here the, the, the like your your two main characters of the story are at a moment where mm-hmm. they are stuck. Mm-hmm. Not like physically. Like they're stuck trying to solve this mystery, yes. and they're under the gun. There, yes. there, there's a tick, there's a ticking clock element. Yep. And then one of them f- just something clicks into place. Yep. And it's such it's a really, clever it's moment. It's a clever moment, and it's and it's really well like paneled mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. There's a lot of great panel work in this series. Um, but again, the pacing on this book is unbelievable. The story, the pacing, the art—it really all comes together. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a worthy read if you haven't been picking it up. Uh, I guess go back and pick up the other issues or wait for the trade when it comes out. I think it's going to be a fantastic yeah. trade read. You're I think going to eat it. Yeah, the <laughs> trick is you just can eat it. Uh, I mean, like, you're just going to be like, I can't stop. Right? I got I to no, get true. to the end. The trick is uh, if you if you want to read this now, go back and pick up one through four. Yeah. But if you want to trade weight, contact your local comic book store and say, I want yeah. the trade for Dark Spaces uh, Dungeon please pre-order for me. Yeah. Yeah. This and, is, this is definitely one of my favorite IDW books. Yeah. I, I like freaking love this book. Oh, and right. again, like Snyder on five issues. I wasn't sure we were going to get, I wasn't sure if he can, if, if like somebody sees a larger storyteller, he's, he has a bigger ideas. Yeah, yeah. But like, he really like a story like this five issues. It's perfection. Yeah. So, well, we'll see. Well, I mean, if, like if you can stick the landing, right. he sticks this landing, <laughs> which is always tricky. Got to stick the landing. But uh, otherwise I high recommend. Uh, incidentally, I also read the first three issues of the Beneath the Trees where nobody sees, oh, no, and I'm, no. uh, you know, and I can say that I think that the book is uh, it's engaging and it's gripping and it's uh, it's a it's very quick, uh, yeah. and you need to like really take your time because 
the writer, artist, creator, uh, paints every single panel, every single page. Mm. And so uh, there is just so much work and time that goes into every single moment of the book. And so you really need to take your time and just labor over it. But yeah, uh, but, uh, yeah it's just a, it's a really quick and engaging read that I think, uh, you know, as much as I, I'm not like... I'm, I'm not in. I'm not in, enthralled with the premise. I'm not like, oh, Dexter with cute animals. That's nuts. Right. But uh, I, I, I know found, that... in spite of my, uh, you know, what some might consider to be cynicism, I was gripped. Like I, right. I, I was like, I need to know what happens. And that, next. but that's one of those things like I was talking about earlier, where like I know there's like there's that's a book that you're like this is competently created, mm -hmm. but maybe it just doesn't resonate with you. Yeah, yeah, no, it's way. exactly and, right. And I think that, you know. I've said this before and I'll say it a million times, uh, but like horror is very personal. Yeah. So like there has to be a whole bunch of different types of it. And mm -hmm. uh, in order for people to find the ones that yeah. they want. So. But, uh, but I should tease that Patrick Horvath, the creator and Scott Snyder, yeah. both are going to be on a show like this yeah. tomorrow. That show is going to drop tomorrow where Scott and Patrick and I just chat about horror. And we also delve into their books. Yeah. Scott really, Scott loves dungeon and he's so like pleased with well, how it's turning out he should because it's like it's tight yeah it i'm is. telling you this is what i expected from the guy who wrote witches absolutely and right. again but i love supernatural yeah. and so for there that not to be here for this to hit me as hard as it did mm -hmm. to resonate with me it's just so well crafted all he has to do is stick the landing in five yeah that's it i think he will because just stick the, the i genuinely think he will because it is not uh supernatural like because it, yeah, it is okay. grounded. You should know that there is not going to be. I don't think there's going to be because he's promised that there won't be. I know. Like a like a last no, moment. I know. Magic. Because or, like, but like that was the point of Dark Spaces. Dark Spaces wasn't meant to, I believe, to have supernatural in it. So I yeah. know that going into it. And so like initially, I was kind of like, well, we'll see. We'll see if if his storytelling can carry me. It, yeah, hundred percent. Exactly. Like, I I and and that's just not. And I'm not saying this is. I didn't. I don't, I don't interview Scott. I I, I, I no. Which you should. Day. It'd be but really I'm just cool. Saying, like. I'm not saying this because it's like, you know, Scott, I'm saying this because I legitimately really like this yes. book a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So if you uh, dig it, they're, <laughs> the, both those series are from IDW, but definitely check out the, t the show tomorrow. Yeah, so, uh, for sure. Catch I, that. I know I will. I haven't seen it. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I read Transformers number six from Daniel Warren Johnson and Mike Spicer. I believe this may be, no, though there's still a little, yeah. Uh, this is the last issue that is drawn by d-dubs um that said i believe ryan otley's taking over not next but in the future oh, sure sure i just mean like that must be like a, uh, an interesting shift for him yes you know to go from knowing that as you're scripting and paneling you can change things to yeah. going to be like oh no and i have to tell someone to go change something yeah yeah <laughs> but get it, my edits in it's true uh th <laughs> this is this this series has always felt the most uh, on its own, uh, despite the fact that it is part of the big skybound Energon universe. Um, and I know that there was like a, there have been at least two tangential connections to the larger world and universe. But if you just love Transformers, particularly the Transformers that was, you know, introduced to you through the 84 cartoon or the movie, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the animated theatrical release, then you'll probably fall in love with this series. Okay. Um, it is close enough, but distant enough for it to be uh, familiar and yet also wholly original. Um, this is very much like Optimus lighting their darkest hour. This is the, this is the darkest point right. for them at this point. Uh, of course, and of course. it's a, uh, it, it's just a really fun, like very savage depiction of the transformers and watching Optimus prime kind of like, re like reach the the point you expect from a transformers adaptation at this point where it's like oh no Optimus prime is going to die and how are we going to uh you know what, what kind of what kind of autobot is he in his last moments and where is this going <laughs> and uh and and what sacrifices will be made by characters within this series and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. but the thing to talk about is that uh there's a great second win <laughs> moment for Optimus prime where yes, uh, he yes. uh, fantastically uh, rallies and uh, delivers some, uh, you know, some final or some attempted final blows against Devastator, and uh, there's a moment where Optimus Prime is 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 just just gearing up to to uh, deliver a, a a dope punch, and uh, 
Danny Warren Johnson is uh, one of the one of the best artists out there for integrating onomatopoeia into mm -hmm. um, his art. And uh, there's a moment where like Optimus stands up there and like some words come to life and write, oh, yeah. And then uh, he's going to punch and like you feel this moment where if you if you watch the, the animated movie, uh, there's a song that you may be familiar with uh, called You Got the Touch. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the actual band, uh, but I don't recall. I think, it, yeah, I don't recall the name of the band. Stan Bush, I think, did the song. But, uh, you know, that's the moment you're supposed to think of. And the reason that you know that is because be behind Optimus Prime, there's this, the, the words come in, they say, you know the song. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just like, yeah, I assume there was some kind of rights issue or something like that. But also, like, you know the song. You know the song. Yeah, it's just like I don't know. It was just a dope moment that was like really fun. You're just you're reading this book, and as is the case with every Daniel Warren Johnson comic that I pick up, you know, when you're you're reading it and you're you know you're beyond Act Two, mm -hmm. uh, you are going to be on like a physical journey. You're just like, yeah, here we go. Like it's just it's 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 just. It's a, he's a special creator and uh, awesome. this is a great book. Yeah. So, you know, but, and they're getting that extremity hardcover has nothing to do with this book. <laughs> no, but uh, there is a Kickstarter for extremity. Uh, we have already uh, submitted our pledge, uh, but our I support our support. Yep. Uh, for the signature edition of extremity, that'll be a little larger. Um, uh, I should say that they wanted $40,000 and they're at two, uh, $209,000. Uh, this is, this should not dissuade you from doing it, uh, because maybe you might be interested in, uh, getting a copy or maybe you might be interested in, um, you know, well, in, this is the in one supporting I them and getting like their stretch goals that, uh, D loves fans forget. Yes. Because it's like, it's, it's all, um, murder Falcon and do a power bomb. Absolutely. Um, no, yeah. and I met. Well, I, I got familiar. I became familiar with his work with Extremity. I remember literally going to, I don't remember what con it was. It was it, New York. It would have been New York. And he was sitting, he was tabling and alone, alone, zero line, mm -hmm. just his own table. And I brought Extremity up to him and he gave me like a special exclusive cover that they had at mm -hmm. New York Comic Con. I guess a lot of people hadn't been coming up to him. And that's like, like a mind bending concept to think of now. Yes. Right? Yes. Like that's ridiculous to consider yeah. that you hear me like talking about how danny warren johnson is this amazing artist who's like really special and you know he's so awesome and everything i would never know him without tiffany's influence uh, and without extremity you were the one who was taught you were talking about extremity you were like this book is so special and so cool and the writer artist is just doing this amazing work and i was just like uh -huh, it's one of, another one of those fantastic <laughs> books that should win an eyes know that tiffany picked out Tiffany should be a comic book editor at this point, but like, uh, I I did not, I didn't read it, and uh, and I was like, and I, and I was all the worse for it. But when he did Dead Earth, I was like, oh, when and you're you like, heard about yeah. this person named Daniel Warren Johnson, I'm like, not nah, tell me more. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> literally, you introduced. Well, you introduced me, and you were like, this is the guy. Yeah, and I had no idea, and uh, you know, you're very sweet. Rest is history. Oh, you just do. Thank you. You have a good eye for talent. Thank you. Um, yeah, I read Avengers Twilight number four. Oh, I'm sorry. What did you, what no, did you do? Ahead. Well, uh, Avengers Twilight number four, Chip Zdarsky, Daniel Acuna. The book I have completely forgotten to catch up on. Oops. Yes. And I think we, I feel like we covered this like literally a week or two ago. I think we did too. And I feel bad because like, I remember the first issue, I was way more into it, I think, than you were. Yes. And then I just forgot the book existed. And it's simply because of the fact that I forgot it was called Avengers Twilight. And I still have forgotten it's called Avengers Twilight. Mm -hmm. I keep thinking it's a Captain America book. It is. But it is it's Captain not America. called Captain America. Nope. So when I'm looking through, I'm not thinking about that. And that's, that's just... That's on me. Yeah. That's not on anybody. Yeah, yeah. That's, on, that's on me. But uh, it is a, uh, th this issue in particular, you know, Cap and company, they go to uh, the prison to free, uh, well, prison slash like base to free the disembodied head of Iron Man while we've revealed that uh, there is in fact a bunch of super, at least two super villains at the helm of America, that being uh, Red Skull and Ultron. Yeah. Um uh, Tony Stark's son obviously is on his way towards a redemptive journey where he is a douchebag, but also doesn't want to support a Nazi fascist. So, you know, who knows uh, what kind of person he'll become? Certainly his uh, father wants him to be, to be better. And so uh, Thor returns and he's just like, it, it, Thor is a good explanation for why he's, why he's been away. And it's just basically like, 
I'm immortal, and it, it's hard to look at you when you're old. Oh. Like, ouch. I don't want to, I don't want to remember you like that. Like, I only want to remember the good times. Uh, but also, uh, when we had that big fight that killed Spider-Man, like, years and years ago, like, yeah. that really, really, really bummed me out. Mm. <laughs> and so I needed some time to get over it. Man. But I forgot the time that I need is, like, your lifetime. Wow, Thor Manchild just living on. Yeah, I like this Thor. It's fun. It's, I get it. You know, it's just like, we need this guy. Uh, but No, you definitely need this guy. But that guy, like... Okay, I know. How long will it take you to? Uh, well, he's back now, mature. and he's he's kicking ass. Uh, but yeah, two more issues left. Um, this issue was better than the last one. I I really enjoyed this you, one. You were kind of rough on. I was. I was not. I was not thrilled. Not but thrilled. Uh, but I dug it. And it's you know there's moments where you know Captain America's wife is told you know she's uh, she's a doctor and she's working with Captain America and company to like help people because you know she was the one i was like i think she's like uh a... she's a secret something no she's yeah. just she was a casualty of captain america's like you know morality because you uh... know he's like yeah i'm back and so like she had to run because otherwise she'd be arrested and she's assumed... like you ruined my life i assumed it was like um yeah it's a movie <laughs> you like it well i don't that, that doesn't it's narrow Arnold down and mars and total recall yeah total recall she was like sharon stone yeah that is what i was gonna okay. say but that'd I be cool it. yeah that'd be fun maybe they will we still got two, two more issues we'll see <laughs> but uh but cap doesn't want it to be over it's just it's just it's kind of sweet but like cap's like i gotta do i gotta do stuff i you know i i care about you i love you and i want to make sure this works but like i gotta go be captain america mm uh but you know we're seeing catholic lead the younger team and these new heroes and you know this hodgepodge of new and old and iron man's back and it's fun it's it, it feels good and i'm just I'm, I'm enjoying this one in particular uh yeah. so we'll see uh where it goes but I, i'm i'm in it for the rest of the series so you know it's only two more issues anyway. all right fantastic yeah what do you have you... any super chats you want to talk about i guess we should talk to some of these fine folks Very who decided to sponsor today's show uh brandon foley random but have you guys watched bojack horseman no i'm not in the mood to be that miserable but ben um, has probably i think at the very least, I've seen many a clip of BoJack Horseman, and I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Uh, Lenny Laserdix, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Since moving, I haven't had time to go to a local comic book store. I ended up finding one about two miles away. Woo! Before I walked in, I told my girlfriend, if they don't have a $1 bin, it's a bust. They had an excellent one. Yes. Good to hear. That's Fantastic. so great. Yeah. Great find. Great yes. find. Hulkzilla, happy Monday, everyone. Always look forward to the show every Monday. Well, thanks, Hulkzilla. Well, thank you. That's so sweet of you. Thank you. Scoro, thank you very much for your support. Uh, hi, Sal and Tiffany. Been a while Hello. since I watched you guys live, so I thought I'd come uh, show some love. You're been sure. out of the comic loop lately. Any trades for the big two the past year that you guys recommend? Uh, I mean, I mean, if, if you if you were only interested in catching up with the post Hickman era of X Men, all the trades are available, and you could just pick them all up and just go for it. Right. That's 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 a little that's prohibitively that's expensive. A lot. So, that's asking a lot. Uh, there are quite a few trades that I have picked up. I think that yeah, if you they're, want they're specifically looking for things that came out in like the past year. Yeah, I I mean, you can get the Batman Superman World's Finest. Uh, first two volumes, I believe, are available in trade. Mm -hmm. uh, that is an amazing series that I know you know and I love. Have, I have one. I would highly recommend the uh, Jed McKay Moon Knight. Yes, run. Moon Knight. Just, yeah. Just grab any of the trades for that. I, you're going to have a good time. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, and uh, otherwise, I mean, you know, there's a really good show. There, there's really good stuff out there now. Uh, I'm trying to think of like a book that I loved and championed, but um, I guess I'll just look at our back issues that we have uh, in our library. That'll be a good way to, to, to tell what we're interested in and what we want, what you, you might want to buy. Okay. Okay. Um, you, you do it up there. So yeah, I mean, uh, I picked up star Trek planet of the apes, the primate directive. That was a great one that I enjoyed, but it's <laughs> out of print for a while. So okay. it might be harder to find. Um, yeah. Uh, people seem to really like Batman, the fortress that didn't come out recently, but it's another one that people enjoyed. Um, you picked up DC mech. That was a fun one. Um, if you uh, were interested in DC versus vampires, that was a cool series. Uh, and yeah. Oh, there was a great uh, Black Label Rom V uh, Aquaman book, Andromeda. That mm -hmm. was neat. I, there, there must be countless that we are not thinking of. Undoubtedly. Yeah, certainly. Um, but uh, that, that'll, that'll get you started. Yeah, but definitely uh, Moon Knight. Thank Check you. Uh, read an article says, hi, uh, FTLT. Uh, really enjoyed last week's episode. Hope you can do more like it in the future for others like Superman Lex, One Woman Ares, and Cap Skull. Um, nice. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 
Thank you very much. And I'm glad you took it. Uh, you checked it out and enjoyed it. Uh, Cat Lawyer, are you sponsor? As your sponsor, might I say you're just excellent. Well, well thank you very you much. Might. Thank you might. You might. Thank, thank you. you. That's high praise from a cat. Any cat. Yeah, thank that's you very true. Much. That's true. What's uh, your favorite? Lautaro <laughs> Medina says Al Ewing is doing Starman story for DC Pride. So they are certainly looking at the X Office guys. Well, let's be honest. DC definitely has a lot. I mean, not that Marvel didn't have its own like British invasion, but like DC hit the British invasion hard. Yeah. So I I, I see them being like, hmm. how weird the Karen Berger who runs Burger Books did not pick up all of them and you know have a second renaissance of of, of, of Vertigo of British invasion comics. Oh, well, I mean, it depends on how much like they're looking for like and payment wise. That's you know? true. Yeah. Uh, Tim B. Guten Tag, man, the Dominant Heron, uh, as Nightcrawler would say. Finally got <laughs> to show some appreciation from Germany live. Good night. Hey! Uh, bo- uh, beautiful beautiful people. people. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Tim. Danke schön. Yeah, danke schön, Tim. Uh, Cat Lawyer, speaking of X Men 97, did you watch Silver Surfer? I loved it as a kid and watching it again, only to realize it ends with the end, like they didn't know. Uh, yeah, I uh, I can I, I will tell you that I believe genuinely that the Silver Surfer animated series was a very faithful adaptation of the comic book, and it was horribly boring. Uh, I uh, it was just it you was made so, me watch some of it. It's in the so past few boring, years, and I was like, cool. It is. It is the perfect depiction of what it's like to read a silver surfer comic book. i would say that people well i mean actually I, I shouldn't speak for them i don't know if silver surfer comic or readers are like yeah it is and i didn't find it boring yeah no i mean listen like the, the silver surfer appeals to very uh <laughs> specific people which i understand and listen some of those things i'm interested in sometimes i'm down for that and other times i'm not okay. uh, but uh, I, I thought it was a really faithful show um yeah, I don't recall how much of it I watched, but it was more than a lot. Like, okay. <laughs> uh, Derek Lansky, would you ever consider going on the Amazing Spider Talk? I don't, uh, I'm not f- intimately familiar with that show, but, uh, you know, have them shoot me an email and I'll be happy to uh, entertain that concept. Them. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, King T. Akeem says, uh, Comp up woo, woo. woo to you too. Long time viewer, fourth time super chatter. Nostalgia oh is a God. hell of a drug. Yeah. So when do we get Marshall Brave Star? Brave Star. Yes, excellent question. When are we going to get Brave Star again? I had an action figure Brave Star back in the day. Um, you were not getting Brave Star. <laughs> but hey, listen, tell your folks at Dynamite because they're scooping up '80s properties like they're candy. You know, maybe there's an interest in Brave Star. I doubt it. Uh, Ray Far, uh, Comp up woo. I read woo. Todd's Torment. Today, I thought, I wish there was a back issue to this crazy story. Then I saw your 10-year-old two-hour live episode. Yeah, we did that. I, I, we were going to redo that episode. That's the one I, I would like to revisit. Ooh, uh, yeah. very nice. Spider-Man Torment from Todd McFarlane. Yeah, this is very cool. Nice. <laughs> uh, Ray Farr, what's Wash up to these days? Give pets and treats. Wash, Kaylee, and Ripley, you're all doing well. They're Thank doing you for asking. Well. Wash has entered into his orange tabby yelling in the house phase of his life. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that was a thing, but TikTok educated me on that Yes, one. I didn't know that either, just, but he just, just started yelling. That, like, Orange tabbies will enter a room, not be looking at you, and just start yelling. And yeah. then when you ask them what's up, they go like, "Oh, yeah, hello, right? I, <laughs> I found you." Yeah, and it's like, and you just you just tell him you're like, "Hey, man," and he's like, "Oh, oh, cool." There you are. It's like, yeah, man. All right. Uh, Gianni P says, "Hey guys, are you guys fans of Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips comics? They are my favorite creative team, and have made some of my favorite comics of all time." Uh, I'm familiar. They, they're on a, like a list of things. I own several of them mm-hmm. in trades. And I'm like, every time I'm like, I got, I got to get to these. Yeah. I got to get to these. Yeah. But just... I, have, I like them enough in concept to own several trades. It's true. Uh, Caden McGregor. Uh, thanks for all your great shows and creator interviews. Thanks a lot, man. Uh, I'm currently ad- applying for editorial inter- internships in the industry because of you guys. Hey, well, well congrats. Fingers crossed, man. Yeah. Keep it up. Go get them. Yeah. Uh, happy funny dogs uh, picked up 97 print of uh, the TBD for kingdom come for half price at my local comic book store and was blown away. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, man. Nice. Fine. Kingdom comes great. Uh, Rafael Martinez uh, says, come up. Woo. Uh, what do you guys think of the DC finest line? Do you think it's going to come out this year? Uh, I have no idea what that is. I don't like your job. Yeah, I know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah no i know exactly what that is i'm sorry we actually talked about that um dc finest is the like because it's coming out around the same time as absolute power uh dc finest is like 
they're reprinting books and they're putting them out under a banner. Oh, interesting. Like, just uh, here we go. Uh, DC also announced DC Finest, a new line of comprehensive collections of the most in demand periods, genres, and characters from across DC history. Scheduled to launch in November, these affordably priced, large size paperback collections start at $34.99, which is a terrible price, and will take full advantage of DC's extensive backlist to appeal to casual okay. and completist fans alike, focusing on characters and storytelling genres instead of creators or prior series, will give casual fans the chance to discover full continuities of their favorite characters while offering completist readers an affordable option to build out their ultimate collection of stories based on their favorite DC superhero or genre. I love this idea of them reprinting things, so I'm I'm here for it. And yes. I actually kind of like the design on them. I also enjoy the design Wait, on scroll them. scroll up a little bit? On there, I don't love that it doesn't look like the blue at the top matches the blue at the bottom. No, that could be a weird thing with the screen because we are looking at it on a screen, and some screens are not um, accurate to color, so it yeah. could be that. Uh, but otherwise, right. I think that's a fun idea. I love the idea of getting affordable comics into people's hands. Yes, especially collections, especially like just getting getting the whole damn uh, the bloody affair. That sounds great. Fantastic. I'm 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 100 on board for that. Great. Oh, uh, you, you, what did you read? I, well, I read a whole bunch. I know. Here we go. Fall of uh, X Dead X Men. Yes. Number three. Um, written by Steve Fox with art by uh, Lin Yoshi, Bernard Chang, Javier, Javier Pina, and David Baldinian. Mm hmm. Um, book looks really fun. Um, yeah. And it's almost over. Mm hmm. I'm not a big fan of this one. And if you are, and I apologize, I'm not attacking you at all. I, I just, I, this one I struggle with. I yes. struggle with this one because most of this issue was them standing around talking, which I love. <laughs> I love characters yeah, that's standing one of my favorite around things. talking. I love them discussing things. I love learning more about them. I love them furthering the plot. I love all of it. Yeah. This was, felt like there wasn't four issues of story, but we needed four Can issues. Can you expand on those, uh, on some of the things we're talking about and make an issue out of it? Right. I mean, this is an ex team who didn't get a chance to do anything. You th it feels like this should be an excuse to give them an opportunity to, to do something, to do some adventures in like a compressed storytelling style. And that, that just is not what this is, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And that is unfortunate. Um, again, if you like this, that's fantastic. I'm so thrilled for you. Yeah. I, I just, I just couldn't, I couldn't. Um, I will read the last one just in case, because you never know if something's going to drop in here because this this fall period, a lot of things have been coming out of like random issues. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, it, it is very much it is just very much moving along. Yeah. Um. So yeah, hooray! They are two different blues. That bugs me. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. So I'm, I'm sorry. I I I wish this was a stronger title, stronger showing for these guys. It's just it's not resonating with me. Yeah. Uh, and if you like it, I'm thrilled for you. Good for you. Uh, I also read Wolverine number 45 this week. Um, again, if you were if you're on board for Ben Percy's Wolverine, but are not a fan of this, sorry, I think it's through 50 issues. Yep, or, it's yeah, Sabretooth War is going to 50. And I don't know what happens after that. Uh, but this is written by Victor Lavelle, Ben Percy, and art by Jeff Shaw. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you know, how dare you put this on the cover of a big showdown between Wolverine and Sabretooth when you have five more issues left of this? Oh, you know, this doesn't, this does not happen. I mean, Wolverine does go to Krakoa and there's like a lot of moving pieces that are occurring mm -hmm. while this is going on. And I just try not to think about it in terms of what's going on during the fall of X. I'm yeah. Just like, whatever. Just, who cares? Okay. It's separate. There yeah. are two Wolverines or sorry. There are two Sabretooth yes. who are from elsewhere who are clearly trying to like destroy Saber, our saber tooth because oh, like, no. he's out of control, and it's like yeah, absolutely fair. Um, the exiles who were from the um, Victor Lavelle saber tooth book are also coming to help out, so we're going to get a lot of like cohesion, people coming together. Okay, and uh, yeah, Kid Omega still in a rough place. Yep, obviously, I really did like the use of his uh, severed head um, <laughs> <laughs> at the end of this. Uh, because Sabres is carrying him around a la was it la last night? Oh yeah, last night on Earth. Yeah, a la oh that God. carrying uh him uh with him, but his head is alive via telepathy. Yeah. And uh, being able to use his powers, uh, but he ends up putting Wolverine in a state where he sees essentially like the past where he sees like old Victor and mm. and it's like Victor's trying to get into something and he's going to presumably use Wolverine to do that by being like, Hey, ready to go on the mission? Here we go. Okay. So kind of fun. Yeah. Kind of fun. Um, but, uh, yeah, like I understand for a lot of folk, this is not what they were looking for for Wolverine. So it is an opportunity. So like kind of clear that from your, 
your list for the time being and go find something else. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to see this one through to the end. Only five more issues. It is only five more issues. And um, yeah, I, I kind of want to see Lavelle and Percy pull this one off. I want to like, I know again, it is, and it is hyper violent for mm -hmm. sure. For, for sure. I feel like there wasn't a super hyper, hyper violent moment in this. Right. Well, is there anything issue? on the cover? There's nothing on the cover that says like, this is really No, bloody. but like they, each issue has kind of had something particularly violent. Yeah. And I feel like it really was They definitely put it on the cover before. Like every time it happens, they put something on the cover. Oh, I guess like, that's true. Oh, yeah, no, it really, it's not there this time. So. Yeah. Mm. Anyway. You get a reprieve. Yeah, a little, little reprieve. Little, little tiny reprieve. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, if we finishing up the X books, um, I read Fallout House of X number three. Um, written by uh, Jerry Duggan with art by Lucas Wernick. Okay. I believe is their name. I didn't have my credits page pulled up as much as I thought I did. Uh, Lu Lucas Wernick and Jethro Morales. Ah. Um, yeah. Uh, this is obviously the flip side of, you know, the rise, uh, of, the powers. rise of the powers of 10. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's great. It, it's just a different tone. Right. Certainly a different tone. Much more like, you know, hey, here's what's going on to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. seemingly, you know, Cyclops and Dr. Uh, Gregor. Stasis or whatever? Or Sa what? What's her name? Dr. Gregor. Yeah, Dr. Gregor. Thank you. Um, or have, you know, taken down the Omega Sentinel for mm -hmm. right now. Obviously, she's going to reboot. They're trying to get out of there. They do run into magic. She brings him um, the appropriate uh, eyewear mm -hmm. <laughs> for it. And they reveal that, like, Clearly, it seems exactly what we thought, that the uh, that Nimrod and other AI were hoping that while the uh, humans and mutants were fighting, they would not be worried about what they were working on. Right. Um, and and so that's where we're at. Juggernaut has uh, the Krakoa, like, mutant well, walking island uh, and has been dragging it around trying to keep it safe. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's just, he's doing the best he can with, with that one. I think that's going to earn him a lot of points. I uh, always check in. Well, I mean, like, you can always join in the X-Men. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, he's been working hard uh, during this time period to, to, to you know, change his, his imagery. Mm -hmm. uh, I am wondering, though, if, uh, you know, Tom Cassidy not being there is going to be an issue. <laughs> right? I know his boyo. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, up on Araka, we check in there and uh, we see Apocalypse uh, and what he doing. And uh, <laughs> what he doing is helping to lead people, which I was like, that is what he what what he wants. That's what he wants, right? That's what that's what he wants and uh, what he can't help himself <laughs> to do. Um, and that that includes people who are of Araka, people who ha are, are mutants who have been placed up there. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all going to go back. They're going to fight for their for their planet. Uh, we see among them Bay the Blood Moon. Mm. which I think is interesting because that's been a, a, a hot question on a lot of people's minds. What happened to Doug's wife? Where is she? Yeah. Um, and how quickly will we forget about that? Uh, <laughs> it, it, Immediately, <laughs> I think. Apparently. Um, but it, it's one of those where I'm like, yeah. And I, and it could have just been, it could have been an issue of, of a book I wasn't reading that they revealed maybe what happened with two of them. That feels like it was a marriage that may not have lasted. <laughs> Uh -huh. but i liked those two i like those two kids and you know like where they were going with their lives um but in this issue we also see uh the return of rogue gambit and manifold oh okay um if you were wondering what was going on with that that was in the rogue gambit little mini that came out yes uh they took manifold off the table in order to bring him back because that's what destiny said destiny's um you know uh word her pro premonitions ah, premonition, um, yes. I, I got this uh premonitions uh are replayed for us you know she mentioned specifically um a, a bunch of things i will read them here for you here so we all are on the same page uh, sure. including uh, so much death and destruction it all culminates with a giant x in the heavens we see that happen oh. as um the uh other sword ship arrives and mm. like create this huge x. sister ship nice uh, over the planet um with the fall of the krakoans Mm hmm. Yeah. I see kings clashing in white, uh, black after the death of the Red Queen. OK. Uh, I see a Jovian bolt from the heavens. I see the stars ripped in half. I hear the poisoning lies of the false captain, his rank earned. The fool who speaks, the truth will pay the price. Mm. I'm like, all right. So we're, we're knocking some things off here. We'll, we'll see them as we go. I think we should all just keep that in the back of our, our minds. I feel like. Um, uh, Duggan and Yellen will definitely be paying attention to um, that in particular as we sure. move forward. Um, but, you know, don't worry about it too much. You know, just enjoy the story as mm -hmm. we go. Uh, needless to say, uh, Firestar was in trouble. And since I, uh, Tony 
intercepts this message, which is just like, hi, if you're seeing this, I'm probably mm -hmm. dead. And Dr. Stace has probably killed me, but hey, go get him. Like, yeah. he, I planted this on him. Go find him. So uh, Emma and Kitty go and 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 take him down. Sorry, it's not Kitty, but I'm, I'm going to refer to her Kate, as yeah, that. Yeah. Well, no, she has a, a new name. Oh, right. Shadow Cat. Uh, no, Shadow Tiger. Oh. Tiger? Is it that? I don't know. Anyway, but I'm referring to her as Kitty. Uh, because that's who she Because we're friends. Yeah. She and I, we're friends because she's a fake character. Who cares? Um, no, it's it's important. Mm -hmm. But I just, whatever. Yeah. Uh, anyway, they go and find him. And uh, meanwhile, uh, he's meant to have uh, you know, something in his brain that prevents psychics from getting in there. Getting in there. Uh, but Kitty takes care of that. And Emma uses her abilities to find out uh, where uh, Firestar is. Sink heads off and is like, I must be close enough because I'm able to like duplicate get, her powers without fire. having to like reach too hard. So finds her, sends her on her way. Uh, Emma's like, yeah, like in the past, I might've just killed you, but like, I'm better than that. I'm not going to just kill you. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's like, oh, cool. Great. She's like, oh no, but what I am going to do is make sure that you live all of like your fears and nightmares and we'll just see what happens. Okay. And uh, he does. And he, uh, this page is gorgeous. I love this page. Nice. Um, and you know, he goes into cardiac arrest and presumably dies. And she's like, cool, great. And Kitty's like, <laughs> like you know, this might come back to bite us. That mm -hmm. might not have been enough to kill him that way. Like this guy mm -hmm. always turns up. And uh, that's when Firestore shows up and uh, she just burns his body. Good. And they're like, cool. Firestar. Sorry. I kind of mumbled that and then, like I said, storm, but star. Mm. Uh, yeah. So needless to say, uh, Dr. Gregor and Cyclops and magic go off to attempt to, to the moon because uh, the AI Nimrod have taken over the X-Men's home. Mm. Uh, you know, it was like an extra. Cyclops' moon house. Yeah, yeah. Their love house. And um, he, he's there. Gregor's like, obviously, as we discovered, this version of Nimrod is her husband. Is her husband. And so, you know, Cyclops, like, it's not, it's not him. It's not him anymore. Yeah. It, it ain't, it ain't him. No, because we've seen like the evolution of Nimrod and how like it went. Like, I have to quickly upload my consciousness into the robot. And then it like, it, it quickly deviated from who he was. Right. But... Well, she decided that he didn't want that. Yeah. He was just going to die. Mm -hmm. He was like, this is fine. She forced it on him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and it's gone awry. And uh, he's like, yeah, no, you know, I, I didn't want to hurt you. Um, oh, wait, what, what is it? I just chose not to lie to you. And then he kills her. Mm -hmm. He's like, so I've decided I'm just going to get rid of you ahead of time. Yeah. So she's gone. That's over. I mean, like, she's like a hardcore dead. Right. Unless she's not a human anymore. But oh, God. Presumably. No, I think we're not going to come back. Yeah. So and then we see that they have launched uh, Sentinel City. And uh, yeah, we'll see where this goes. I love all these like takes on Orcus from various people. Director Devo, who's mm -hmm. someone who's someone that magic will be after in the next issue. Fei Long, Dr. Stasis, Modok, Moira and Nimrod. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, good stuff. Then we what does Moira say? Is it? Oh, what is, is it Moira? telling? Moira says, Orcus is, is something I've not tried before. Mm. So we'll see. Professor X, presumably based on the dead X-Men and other issues, he is headed back to talk to Moira before. Yes. At, at the beginning of apparently year 10, like th this life. I mm -hmm. thought he was going back to the beginning, beginning. But yeah. like, presumably going back to this to try to convince her not to do this. But, you know, obviously he, his plan is to actually kill her. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Good. Good stuff. Cool. Great. Great book. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to more. I, between the two of them. I like Rise of the Powers of Ten more, but then again, between the books when they first launched, between House and Powers, I really like Powers yeah. a lot. So, yeah. well, I read Amazing Spider-Man 45 uh, from Zeb Wells with art by Carmen Carnero. Uh, this is the. I thought you weren't reading this. Yeah, I, I I love the cover, and I was like, you know what? Like they want me to check in. They want me to read this. They yeah. they were like, hey, Gang War's over, new status quo. What do you think? Um. And you know it's it's just as terrible as it always is, but uh, the the art was fine. You know, mm -hmm. it's serviceable at best, but it's the flagship book of the series or of, of the publisher. So why wouldn't it be? You know, one of the best artists you have on the on the team. Mm -hmm. uh, another classic uh, decision for this title is par for the course, as you'd expect. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that I uh, you know the, actually the art is not terrible at all, but mm -hmm. you know it's it's not uh, it's not ringing any bells or you're setting any fires it's okay. just it, it, it exists it is it is a book that happens okay the cover is a lot more dynamic surprisingly enough uh you know but it's uh jr jr doing his uh he's in his heroes in the rain period okay uh but yeah this is um peter needs to uh free aunt anna because that's a plot line in there and 
Um, she was put into Ravencroft because she was because the Krakoan medicine made her go bonkers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, it but it's not the Krakoan medicine. No, but Peter uh, helped develop a, a cure in an X Men book, and so he stole the cure from the X Men and then administered it to Aunt Anna at uh, Ravencroft. But, but he didn't have to. They, <clears throat> they got it everywhere. Yeah, but he didn't have time to wait for them to do that, so he took it with him in this. Uh, sure. Zeb Wells wrote Hellions. He was definitely part of the team. No, he no, knows. I get what's it, but I'm, I also want to correct you. It's not the Krakoan medicine that's the problem. Well, no, but the book Orcus's, said Krakoan medicine. Right, but it's Orcus's like changing yes. of that. They did something to it. It's technically the Krakoan medicine, but it's Orcus who did that. And Peter yes. knows that. That's right. That's right. But he doesn't say that because who could bother? So uh, he administers his <laughs> uh, this 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 cure to Aunt Anna, but not before Aunt Anna somehow manages to bite Peter on the hand while she is infected with whatever this uh, Orcus medicine uh, has made her into. Um, I would imagine that someone with an early warning detection sense uh, and uh, super speed might uh, deter a geriatric woman from biting him, but we needed that to happen in the book, and so that happened. Excuse me, have you ever been bit by an old person? I'm trying to remember. It's been a while, but I used to work <laughs> at an old age home, so like, you know... Okay, well, I didn't expect that. Uh, but yeah, uh, it, it's, it's so. It, but that—that's the kind of thing that happens in this book, where it's like, oh, that's really that—that that should not have happened, and it's just you know. But then you know, you get a bone. You know, like Peter will run into uh, Sandman, and he'll call him by the name he chose to call himself back in the '90s, and so it's like, oh, that's a fun reference to a thing that happened 25, 30 years ago. But is that enough for things that suck to happen in this book? No. It's just, and I genuinely, I do. I was like, let's try it. Let's, let's, let's just, let's just jump in and try it. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, this is terrible. Not for you. But mm -hmm. uh, it does uh, tease that uh, the Sinister Six is coming back. Uh oh. Listen, that's that's the uh, in case of emergency. Yeah. Please break glass. Yeah, get the Sinister Six involved. I mean, Lord knows, Sony wants the Sinister Six in there. Hey Sal, mm -hmm. did you know that Helen of Windhorn number one came out? I last week? Uh, did not. Wow, Helen of Windhorn. Yeah, Helen of Windhorn came out last week. Yes, it did. Number one, Helen of Windhorn came out. Mm -hmm. uh, please don't take us uh, as, as as mocking of this book. It's written by Tom King with our bit Bill because Evely, uh, the, the team, team from the team from uh, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. Hey, I can I can do this. I yeah. Can do a book. Um, <laughs> uh, with art uh, with colors by uh, Matthias. Matthias, Matthias Lopes. Mm -hmm. Probably butchered that, but I apologize. Um, so it, it's 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 beautiful. It's gorgeous. Um, I read it in physical. I'm thrilled that I read it in physical. I would like to constantly read it in physical. It gave it more of a storybook quality. Yeah. Um, for those who are thinking based on the start of this book that it is going to be just like oh he's just rehashing Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow that's not what this is it may have a similar feeling start but I can tell you right now that is not what this is um I initially I was like is this going sort of like uh Strange Adventures meets Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow not really but like there are there are elements that might make you think that but well it remains to be seen this is completely its own thing and it is spectacular I will say if you did enjoy both of those books you will probably enjoy this even if you don't know who these characters are because they're not trademark characters uh Bilkis Evely's art is unbelievable. I don't understand how she can keep getting better and better. And yet here we are. Here we are. She can draw anything and everything. <laughs> In fact, like she draws an older character at the start of this book. And I got to tell you, um, yeah, it, she draws people with a beauty and grace and, and a lived in history. You can see this woman's face and you know she, she lived a life. And mm -hmm. it's just, <sighs> it's great. This is so good. Sal? Yeah, I enjoy it. <laughs> I agree. It's a, it's a phenomenal story. Uh, fun, uh, you know, dual uh, timeline kind of story. Flashbacks is the majority of the Helena Windhorn, mm -hmm. uh, whereas uh, the framing device is the is the present day. and um, Which is very much a little like Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. Oh, yeah. But you get less of that framing device. No, certainly. In that one. In this one, it is it is much more, um, you're, being, you're going along on a journey. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. As I understand it, uh, she uh, apparently inks with a brush, which I was not familiar with. That is inhuman. That yeah. is that is correct. What uh, Gavin says there is absolutely that is inhuman. Um, she is a magical being from another place, mm -hmm. and uh, we are just happy that she is here to grace us with um, artwork like this. Yeah. Uh, seriously, do yourself a favor. I I know that for a lot of folk, 
reading a book that with characters you maybe you're less familiar with is just not something you're super interested in. But if you do like, if you like Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow, um, because of the storytelling, especially if it was like, I'm not a big Supergirl fan, but I was so but enthralled so with what's happening. That, give this book a try. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Like I literally cannot wait. I agree. I am. I, oh yeah. Ah, it's not worth, uh, you know, we're not going to jump into it. I, I just don't want to, you know, I don't want to give away too much. It's just, it's just I know a really that's good book. the thing. I'm like, I, 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 I can't, I can't, but like, there is a twist. Yeah. Like you're like, you feel like there's going to be a twist by the opening of this. And then you're like, and then there's the twist and you're like, could this have just come out as one book? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and as per usual, there are true grit references in this book, oh, sure. uh, as was the case with the uh, Supergirl woman of tomorrow, but it's also weaved more expertly, I think into the, uh, Oh, into yeah. the character i love i love these characters yeah i love i can't wait to get to know more about them yeah that's great thrill yeah definitely worth picking up a hundred percent uh vonnie v says hey guys a little off topic but me and a friend are having a debate about who wins godzilla or hulk are the strongest uh and what is the first comic you ever read i'd say the first comic i ever was probably something like batman like one of the first batmans like from the golden age uh and uh i think yeah right or and, dark knight returns and hulk uh beats godzilla uh, godzilla does not get stronger as he gets angrier hulk is essentially an o omega level rage monster right but godzilla does have the power of like you know always coming back especially if he's fighting for the good guys mm -hmm. that's true that's true yeah. and i mean like listen oftentimes godzilla is coming with with at least mothra back and back that's true up, and yeah. i'm just saying revolutionary that's, dragon that's a power couple yeah that is a power couple right. right there uh, hey, Compop, reading Ultimate Black Panther and seeing Dune Part 2 makes me love Ultimate Black Panther even more. Well, Tiffany, you read Ultimate Black Panther number two from Brian Hill and Stefano Caselli. Yeah. Did you get a chance? No, I didn't. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, Yeah, man, this is a great book. Yeah. I actually, I really, really, <laughs> I, I'm just enjoying the Ultimate Initiative right now across mm -hmm. the board. You are, yeah. Um, They all have very different vibes. They have very different um, creative teams mm -hmm. of different looks and, um, you know. And tone and ideas. The whole thing, the whole thing. Um, But, you know, the first issue of this, I was like, I think I really like this. Right. right. And this issue, I was like, I really like this. And I literally cannot wait to find out what happens next. Sure. In this, like, they're setting up, you know, it's like you got the political intrigue. You've got obviously Black Panther going on in there. You have like the uh, possibility of like, you know, a, 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 you know, we have a Khonshu and a Ra. Yes. But they're representatives. Yeah. You know, we're like we're doing something very different with Moon Knight because we're talking about ultimate. So nothing follows what you think it might. Right. Mm -hmm. But enough is following with like, you know, Wakanda that you're like, it kind of makes you get into this like lull. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, I, I kind of know where this is going. Sure. And then it's like, right. I actually have no idea. And then, of course, there's the storm of it all. Yes. Right. And like, how is that going to play out? We get a little hint of how that might play out in this. But I got to tell you, there's like the big question of like, there is a traitor in Wakanda and who is it yeah and every time i'm like oh i think i know who it is and i'm like do mm -hmm. I? yeah do I? I don't know i That's don't know cool. but i really like um this like version of t'challa t'challa who you know is married is you know ruler uh and is does not want to go to war right um but is being forced to do that and maybe making some choices he shouldn't be mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know based on what he thinks is the best for his people he's kind of held to that versus just being black panther like, yeah, yeah um so i oh, man and honestly the the art uh caselli yeah yeah it's it's incredible agreed it's absolutely absolutely incredible um just really great character moments depicted uh mm -hmm. in the art but also incredible action right and uh yeah i mean I just, I love that T'Challa, we're going along with him. Like he, like T'Challa is kind of our ride along, mm -hmm. right? And so it's like, we're getting advice from Okoye, his wife, right? We're getting advice from Shuri. We're getting advice from um, the, you know, prophets, Yes. right? So it's like, you have all these things like, who do I listen to? Right. You know, he's got his spies, like the whole thing. And I'm like, I'm right there with him. Like, I, I think T'Challa knows what's up. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I'm just waiting for him to let us know. <laughs> I'm just le waiting for him to let us know what's happening. Um, but, you know, we got a little action with him as um, Black Panther in this. Cool. And uh, like I said, we did get a storm sighting. And I'm, ex I'm excited. Yeah. I'm, I'm thrilled. Because again, this is the ultimate universe. This is a chance Anything for these two happen. characters to meet again. Yeah. And we'll see where we'll see where this goes. Will yeah. sparks fly? I don't know, but I love this book. If you had any interest in it at all, I do highly recommend you pick it up. Um, it is much more like 
Spider-Man has like it is it is a Spider-Man feeling book, but maybe a little less like super heroic right now. And yeah. like X-Men is doing its own thing and it's beautiful and I love it. Right. But it probably is not so much traditional. This has a little more traditional look to it. And yep. again, with that undercurrent of political intrigue. Oh, sure. So, great stuff. Great, uh, great stuff. Ray Farr. I just read the oath last week and I really enjoyed that strange. The beginning also made me remember how much I loved early Anya Corazon and her first suit. Yeah. yeah. Man, oath strange is fantastic. He's just, He's snarky, he's quick-witted, but big-hearted. Um, the relationship between him and Wong in that, I love it. I yeah. love it so, so much. Uh, Raidu, uh, Helen Windhorn by acclaimed <laughs> writer Tom King. I believe that's the first I've heard of this. Either of you uh, make that mention. Yeah. I know. I mean, listen, you know, if you didn't get a chance to pick up Helen of Windhorn, uh, number one. It's from Dark I, I Horse. Tell you, I, I recommend. I don't know if you heard that it came out. I did. Did you hear? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because Helen of Windhorn, number one, did come out. What was it? Uh, Helen of Windhorn, mm, number one. Okay. Well, there's some comics that are coming out this week that we think you should check out as well. Oh, what? Excuse me, but before we do that, what's your book of the week, sir? Oh, man, book of the week. Excellent question. I'm struggling with this one. This yeah, week. I know, I know. It's going to be tough, but uh, obviously it's Helena Windhorn. Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> I'm right there with you, but... but Black Panther was really Black great. Panther was incredible, and Dark Spaces Dungeon was... Honorable mention. So, like, that's the thing. That's a, that's what's struggling with. Like, yeah. I had a great reaction to Helen of Windhorn. I kind of knew I was probably gonna like it going into it, mm -hmm. but like, I really was like just enthralled by the story and was able to completely separate myself from King's previous work as I was reading it. Yeah. But Dark Spaces Dungeon, that last page for me, like, I had a physical reaction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I had a real physical reaction to it. Fair. Um, I probably will say it's Helen of Windhorn. Mm hmm Not just for the not just for the bit. Um. I really did enjoy it, but close, close seconds from Black Panther and Dark Spaces Dungeon yeah, this week. Yeah, this yeah. was a good week. Good week. It was a good week. Uh, also, uh, I believe it's uh, Thomas Daughtry who said, uh, do you think there will be a day where Clark and Bruce will not be Superman and Batman anymore? Or will they always be the only main Superman and Batman? Boy, I hope they are. Because I don't care about other people being those characters. And I, I am not interested in reading about other people being the characters that they are. Clark Kent was invented to be Superman. Bruce Wayne was like Superman is Clark Kent. Like Bruce Wayne was invented to be Batman. And there are other characters who can be those characters. Miles Morales is Spider-Man. Peter Parker is Spider-Man, you know, but Miles Morales is a Spider-Man in the context mm -hmm. of there having been a Spider-Man, you know, mm -hmm. it's like there are originals and those characters will always be, and they will always endure and they will always continue. Yeah. Um, there are, and, and feel I, free to do other like deviations and expansions and ideas. And, you know, like even in the golden age, they were like, Oh, Batman and Robin, eventually they get old and they have kids and they call themselves Batman two and Robin two. And like, you know, but even then that was weird and silly. And they were doing the exact same things that the, their predecessors were doing. Like back then they were just like, Oh, it's all the same. Like they were behaving the exact same. Mm -hmm. There was no nuance or interest you know, to, to get involved, but now you can, because writers are trying things and giving character to the, to the, to these, uh, these characters, mm -hmm. but yeah, no, I don't think so. Okay. Fair. Uh, but let's talk about some comics that come out this week. Let's do it. I'm excited. Nightwing 112. Uh, love the cover. Nightwing is a good book and it's really fun. Worth checking out. Uh, Batman Superman World's Finest number 25. This is the best book DC's putting out. Uh, I, uh, well, one of them, certainly. <laughs> Uh, one of the best. It's on, on the top. Uh, Superman 12. I really enjoy the series. Uh, it's just great. Worth checking out. Uh, David Baldion's on art in this one. And uh, it's just a fun series. Uh, Wonder Woman number seven from Tom King and Guillaume March. Uh, because we need to take a break. Daniel Samper needs a oh minute. Oh boy. Okay. Well, this, is a, this is a special issue. It's it a says. special issue where Guillaume March is doing the issue. And then Samper is going to take eight to 12. Yeah. But. <gasps> Yeah. Oh my God. That's amazing. Right? I am so on board for the pitch of this. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to say what it is? All right. It's called For the Batman well, Who Has I, Everything. They're not calling it that. It just says that. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Adventures of Superman and Wonder Woman, Clark and Diana take a thrilling journey into space to get a birthday gift for their for dear friend Bruce. I love that I'm idea. I'm so on board for that. What a great idea. I believe Ooh. we're also still going to get a, I'm sure we'll get a, a backup because uh, those, uh, those Super Sons Trinity stories are so great. Um, I, uh, was interested in the concept of this pitch. They're bringing back web of Spider-Man and wow. they're bringing back the nineties logo, which as a child, when they launched it, I hated 
I was like, what are you doing? Why does his logo need to have need to look like it's spider legs? Um, Greg Capullo drawing Spider-Man on the cover, by the way. I First see that. time I see in that. a long time we're getting Greg Capullo Spider-Man. But this one is written by a menagerie of people, including Zeb Wells, Alex Segura, and Greg Weissman and Steve Fox, uh, with art by Salvador LaRocca, Ed McGinnis, and uh yeah, it's uh whew. It's, that is that is that is a tough sell, but I'm gonna read it anyway. Uh, and uh, Kill Your Darlings number seven uh, is uh, almost done, second to last issue. Oh man, okay, so that's the penultimate penultimate issue of Kill Your Darlings uh, from uh, from the team of yes. uh, Ethan Parker and Griffin Sheridan and John Hill. Oh, I'm sorry, no, it wasn't John Hill. It was uh, uh, Bob Quinn. And John Hill. But yeah, well, that's that's issue eight. Sorry, I moved it. Yeah, yeah. It's just... it's, uh, it's 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 Bob, Bob Quinn. Quinn. Yeah, sorry. That's because um, I moved it. It's my fault. That's all right. That's my fault. Uh, what am I excited for? I'll probably check out Invincible Iron Man number 16 uh, coming out this week. See what Iron Man's up to in his giant mech mm -hmm. uh, of um, Stark armor. Uh, that's uh, Jerry Duggan on um, writing and Chris Lee on art. Yep. Uh, so I'll definitely be checking that one out. Uh, there it is. Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong number six. Uh, six uh, Brian Buccoletto and uh, Kristen Duce. Duce? I don't know. Uh, on uh, art for that one. One. I like this series a lot. I yeah. know this is not one that Sal has been thrilled with, but I'm here for it. And yeah. I can't wait to cover this one on the couch. <laughs> That'll be a good one. I think we're going to have a good time yeah, with I it agree. For, for sure. Vengeance of the Moon Knight uh, number three is coming out. What's going on with Moon Knight? Well, we're going to hopefully find out one of these days. Um, <laughs> Jen McKay and Alessandro Capuccio continuing their work in a different titled book, mm -hmm. um, which is fair. Yeah. Totally fair with how uh, Moon Knight ended. And uh, yeah, it's, it's it's been a good series. And Again, Jim McKay loves this character. Resurrection of Magneto, number three, Al Ewing, art by Luciano Vecchio. So I'm, I'm looking forward to finding out what this is. And, and it looks like, based on this, I was correct. Yes. And I'm thrilled. You were. I think you were right. I think I was right. About That's cool. Who we thought it was that, that Magneto and Storm saw in the darkness. And if I am right, I'm, I'm delighted. Who yeah. <laughs> would be mad about that? <laughs> uh, I don't know what this is, but let's find out together. I'm oh, reading no. that. X-Men Forever number one is coming out. Uh, Haunted House of X. How can you kill your a digital god? Uh, a few days, blah, blah, blah. Questions be answered since the end of Immortal X-Men. All right, so if you liked Immortal X-Men, you should go and pick up X-Men Forever number one. It's written by Kieran Gillen or by uh, Lucas Mars Marska. Mareska? Mareska. You're probably correct. I like this cover a lot. It's oh great. yeah, it's, it's great. a great looking cover. Uh, yeah, I loved Immortal X Men, so I'm I'm here for it. I, I I really like the fact that Marvel is giving this X team, like the the team from Krakoa, a chance to really just finish up yes. the stuff that they wanted to finish up. I think that's amazing. Oh my god. Next, oh no. Next week's a rough week for my wallet, folks. John Constantine Hellblazer, Dead in America number three is also coming out. That's Cy Spurrier and Aaron Campbell. This is the best book that DC is putting <laughs> yes. out. Um, yeah, that's my favorite for me, I should say. Oh, sure. Asterisk for me. A hundred percent. Love that book. Oh, Beneath the Trees and Nobody Sees number four comes out also. Excellent. So I'll have to read that. Yeah, 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 for sure. And I'm sure that, ooh. Oh, we're, we're getting more. Cool. Uh, if you guys recall, uh, the first season of Star Wars Visions, there was a, uh, a concept about a about a Ronin, mm -hmm. and uh, so they're revisiting that concept yeah. with this with this issue. Uh, Takashi Okazaki uh, returns to the world of Ronin once more. Um, so I'm excited, yeah, uh, of the Ronin and his Sith. So I'm I'm probably gonna try to grab that too. Sweet <sighs> money, yeah. Why plus gargoyles? <sighs> I've fallen off of that one, unfortunately. I know that's um. Oops, I don't think I can read this. I don't think I could read this. Mm -hmm. There's a book that's coming out about um, animals. I just I try to avoid those. Yeah, for me, it's just not something I'm I'm, I'm terribly good with. Is like I'm gonna spend most of the time going like, what's gonna happen? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, I think I, I'm sure there's plenty of other things that I may or may not pick up. But next week's gonna be a busy week. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> no, it's not a bad thing, right? It's not a bad thing no. except when like so many come out and then you're like, ooh. That price tag. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would have been the same price tag if it was spread out throughout the month. It's just, mm -hmm. I don't know. And Ray Farr, can you recommend any Detective-esque strange runs? Um, 
I mean, honestly, the the oath is the is the one. The reason yeah, why I think one. it was uh, like greenlit is because it was like such an original version of Doctor there Strange. Was, like there was a there was like an issue that indicates that that's where they're going with the series, and then they don't go that way. Um, but go check out some of the '90s stuff. There's definitely some elements of detective stuff in there mm -hmm. uh, for sure. Um, I should probably just come up with like a list of things. Yes, of, like when it comes to that, and have it ready to go. Mm hmm. I'm never ready. I'm never prepared, people. I'm just thinking about how much it's going to cost next week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, we want to thank you so much for helping us out by super chatting. Uh, thank you to our sponsors uh, for all of that. want to thank the chat for being cool in the comments. And thanks to some industry professionals for visiting us and saying hi and all uh, sharing best. all your gifts with us and your comic books. Uh, I want to thank everybody for being here. Thank you, Tiffany, for hosting today's show. And of course, if you want more, go to twitch.tv slash comic pop or youtube.com at comic pop plays to check out Tiffany doing some streams. I don't know what you're playing. Probably Helldivers. Uh, Apparently, I should be playing Supermarket Simulator. I mean, you could. That'd be fun. But I, I, I listen. I fight for Super. That's right. That's right. But uh, we want to thank you so much for being here, and we'll see you guys next week with another episode. And of course, if you want more tomorrow, big chat with Scott Snyder and uh, Richard Horvath of Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees, uh, previously, you know, recorded. Dungeon, yeah, uh, but previously recorded. Uh, that will be dropping tomorrow here on this channel. So uh, set your uh, set your reminders by liking the video subscribing to the channel clicking the bell for notifications and checking your notification settings and seeing exactly how you're being told what's coming out mm -hmm. uh, because i think youtube's messing around again so you know it's always worth checking what's going on but uh from uh, from us to you thank you so much we'll see you guys next time so long everybody bye